So today we'll be discussing about uh, chapter 16 uh, of the book and the, the learning objectives uh, for this chapter. Uh, we are going to learn how to work uh, with strings in R. So we'll be looking at functions that are coming from the string R package because mainly the R for data science book uh, is to, to cover all the tools in which we can use uh, doing our data science uh, workflow. So today we'll be looking at the strings R package, but uh, by next week, I will be taking our discussion into another level, seeing how we can use strings uh, to apply some regular expressions. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, some regular expressions, how we can use string R package, but in order for us to go into the regular expression part, we need to have a firm and good grasp of working with uh, strings uh, in R. So for the introductory part, uh, I say strings are not uh, what glamorous, they are high profile components of R, but they do play a big role in many data cleaning and preparation tasks. And the string R package uh, provides a coercive set of functions designed to make working with strings as easy as possible because they need to make it very easy when we are uh, dealing with strings. And I will keep working with strings uh, in the next chapter where we will learn more about the power of regular uh, expression. So I just, in the notes, I just added some link uh, to the string R package downside and also to the string out uh, the cheat sheets because when we are working, when we are, when we are working with, uh, when we are working with strings, uh, we, in any package in R, uh, the main thing is for us uh, to get a firm uh, understanding about uh, the package in which you want to know more about the package is for always good. Uh, we consult uh, the, the documentation because the Tileyverse package is a package that is well documented. So like this is the documentation uh, for the string R package. So I can post this also uh, in the chat window for, that is, the link uh, to the documentation. We also have uh, the, the website, which is a package down website uh, for the string R package. Yeah, this is the website for the package and the website we can get all, all the necessary info about uh, the string R package. Uh, we can find everything in the website because all what we'll be discussing, we can, and, in the website, we still have uh, the cheat sheets there in the website for the string R package. So I will just go back uh, to my notes. So please, uh, you feel free to stop me at any point in case there is anything we discuss that is not clear so that I can come back. So the, for the prerequisites uh, for this uh, chapter, we'll be talking about, uh, we'll be working, we'll be loading our library tidyverse. So when we load the library tidyverse, we are going to have access to the core uh, packages of the tidyverse that we'll be looking at. Like for today's discussion, we'll be looking at the string R package. So we'll be looking at the string R package. Then we are going to touch a little bit of some code that is coming from the, from the tidy R package. Then we are going to use our library baby names. This is a package. We need to install the package in order for us uh, to get, get access uh, to the to the uh, to the library before we can call the library baby name. So basically, when we are working with uh, strings uh, in R, if we just type uh, str underscore, we just get we are going to get uh, this R Studio uh, auto completion is going to pop up uh, this window where we can scroll to see which of the part of the functions in which we want to use uh, in our in our data analysis uh, process. So here we have. The STRC, which is like STR combined, we'll, we'll be looking at how we can use these functions uh, to combine uh, multiple strings uh, together. We also have STR convert, STR count, STR detect to detect for a specific pattern in our data in a specific column. So STR, STR dupe for duplicated, STR extract, and STR extract all. So, those are basically what we are going to have. We are going to get uh, this R Studio auto completion when we are when we are in R Studio and we have loaded a library tidyverse. We just write str and underscore. 
we are going to have this R Studio auto pump completion is going to pop up for us to choose which specific function uh, we want to use. Uh, are there any questions from this point before I proceed to the next slide? Feel free to, any, maybe you can put in, you can comment, you can also pop in your reactions. So if there are none, okay. Okay, so I can just uh, proceed. Okay, I can just proceed, no question. So basically when we want to create a string in R, we always use uh, this, we always, we have string one, we always use the two quotation, the two columns symbol. We always use the two column symbol because that has been discussed in this uh, documentation. We have the, the tidy verse uh, style guide. We do recommend that we should always use two strings, two uh, quotation symbol, but we can also create a string using just one quote. It's still going to be string. So when we run that, we are still going to create uh, the same string. So if, in case you want to learn more about this, I think I post uh, the link to the documentation, the study verse style guide, uh, where, where they do explain uh, that. So, but, but there are some instances uh, whereby we are creating a string in R and we started uh, the string uh, with just uh, one quotation. We have one quotation in that space. Then in the last, in the last that it, there is no quotation there. In that case, our studio, we are going to have this plus sign. This plus sign means something is missing. There are some certain arguments in which uh, we are supposed to produce maybe the last quotation sign for you to complete uh, that function. You need to supply that. But in that case, when you are stuck in that process, we can press the escape key in our keyboard. Once we press the escape key, then we are going to start uh, the process afresh. Because when I start working with uh, R, I think at times I used to uh, run into this uh, this kind of error whereby I will run some certain functions. There are some specific argument in which I need to complete that function in which I have not supplied those argument. So our studio will just bring a plus sign mean that something is missing. We need to supply it in order for the function to be complete. So there are some instances where you run into this. So we need to know that, oh, I miss one string here. You need to put that string you need to put that uh, string there in order uh, for you to be able to complete uh, the function. So this one just mainly talk about uh, the escape uh, character when we are working uh, with a string. So we can use this uh, forward slash to escape. We can use it in do, doing to escape for some specific uh, pattern. We will see this in depth when we are working, uh, dealing with the chapter that talks about regular expression. So we'll see uh, how to use this more de in depth in that process. So we have here, we have double quotes. So we have the forward slash, which is like the escape. So we have our quotes with, uh, that is surrounded by the string, or we can have it in this way, where we have one and one, and within that we have two. So when we run this, we are going to have double quotes. We run this, we are going to have single quotes. He says, so if you want to include a literal backslash in our string, we will need to use the, we need to escape it. So we can escape it using this double quotes. So once we put the double quotes, we know that that backslash, we are, we are, we are going to what? Instead of an escape in our, in our, so in order for us to view uh, the results for this string in which we have created, we can use this str underscore view function that is coming from the string R package. So in that case, we have X, which is symbol, single quotes, double quotes, and also what the backslash. So when we pass in this, so when we call our X, this is our X, this is, a, uh, this is what we created with X because the first one, in the first one we have, we have just, we want forward slash, which is the escape key, the second, and also the third. Which is the two, which is the two backslash in which uh, we supplied here. But when we use the str underscore view, then we pass in the x. So what are we going to get there? We are, we know that this is a single quote, uh, this is a double quote, and this is just a backslash, which is like an escape character, just as I discussed uh, above. So 
So for the raw string, so how do we deal with the raw, uh, when we are working uh, with the raw string uh, in R, we are still going to use just as our example in which we have created above. Here we have tricky. We are assigning it a, a double quotes. We also assign it to uh, our, our slashes, our three uh, slashes. Here we have single quotes, which we have a double uh, backslash. Or we can have a we can have a single uh, 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 backslash. So when we have str view for the tricky, so str view for the tricky. So when we pass in this, we are going to know that we have double quotes. We also have single quotes, and we also show that this our assignment operator use the uh, columns symbols to just then we we are going to see uh, the strings in which are. Uh, uh, in which we have just uh, view, which we have viewed uh, with our, our str view function because str view function is very useful. Uh, I'm so sorry. I think I made an error here because I repeated the str view and I was still passing tricky uh, twice. So maybe before I push the notes back uh, to the GitHub repository. So this raw string chapter, I'm going to make uh, that correction before I push my notes back to the GitHub uh, repository. So this is just about uh, the raw strings and how we can use str view to view the string in which we have created. So we, we also have, uh, they also discuss some other special characters uh, that we can have in our strings. So we also know that the forward, the forward slash is for the escape character. We also have, forward slash and N, which is which stands for new line, forward slash and T, which is like for a tab key. We also have some Unicode, some Unicode, which is like the forward slash and U and forward slash and capital U, because this way of writing non-English character, because like this Unicode, when I pass this to R, this is what is going to return. So when I pass this other Unicode, is going to return this uh, symbol for me in my R. So when I pass this other one, it's going to be like T, which is for the tab. It's going to pass, it's going to release uh, uh, this is what I'm going to get. Then this other one, the tab, we have new line. So we are going to have this. But when we use the STR view uh, to view this object in which we have created above, we are going to have one, so we are going to have this, we are going to have the Unicode, and this is what we, we, we are going to have as because we have one, two, three, and four columns. So I don't know if there are any questions here before I move to the next slide. Okay, so. Go to the next slide. So we can also create many strings uh, from, from data. So now that you have we have learned basics of creating a string by two by two hand, we will go into details of creating string from other strings. This will help us solve common problem where you have a text you wrote that you want to combined with strings from a data frame. For example, you might combine hello with a name variable. So we'll see all those examples uh, here. So here, we will be using the STRC. STRC function from the string R package help us to combine uh, two or more strings together. So STRC, we have this string, which is X. We also have this string, which is Y. So when we use STRC and pass these two string to it, it just creates, give us a result of just uh, one string, which is X, Y. We can also have STRC, we pass in three string. So it's going to combine these three strings into one string, which is gonna be X, Y, Z. Because these are very useful in your data wrangling process because there might be some certain thing you want to achieve. But if you understand how to use all these functions, uh, the whole process become easy here. Yeah. We have STRC, we have a string here, which is hello. Then we have an, another vector. This vector is having two names, John and Susan. So this one is gonna be hello, John, hello, 
and Susan. So when we use STLCs to combine them together, so we are going to have hello John and hello Susan. So they also had discussed that STLC works similarly to what the base zero function uh, that is coming uh, from the base R package. So it works similarly. It's very similar to the base zero function uh, from base R. So in this example here, we have a data frame, which is a table. It has name of Flora, David, and Terra. So we have DF, which is our data frame that we have created here. So we are using the mutate function that is coming from the Dimpla package. So the mutate help us to what, create a new column, which is like a transformation of the uh, previous column. So the new column we want to create is greeting. So we want to add a new column in the DF data frame called uh, greetings. So the function we are using, we are using the STRC, which is STR combined. So STR combined, we are passing a string, which is high. Then we put a comma, uh, we have a name and the separator is going to be this. So when we run this line, if you execute this line, this is going to be our, our column, which is the name. We have Flora, David, and Terra, which is the name in which we created here. So here we just added a new column called greeting. So this new column is gonna be hi Flora, hi David, and hi Terra, because it's gonna be hi name, which is what Flora, hi name, which is what David, hi name, which is what Terra. So it's going to just hide this at the end of the string. So we, this is a uh, very, very uh, useful, but there are some, there are some instances where we have some missing values to display in another way. So in that case, uh, we need to use uh, this uh, new function, which is the coalesce uh, function that is coming uh, from, the, from the string R package. So in that case, we have DF and then mutate, which is to create the new column. We have already seen how we create this in one, which is STLC. We have the column here, which is high. Then we have a coalesce. Then we pass in the name, which is the name we have created earlier, which is coming from the DF uh, data frame. Then we have U and we have this iPhone. Then we have greeting two. We have coalesce function. Then we have STLC. We have I, name, and high. So when we run, execute that, this is our default column for name. Uh, this is the greeting one. We have hi Flora, hi David, hi Terra. Here we also have hi Flora, hi David, hi Terra. Okay, so. Okay, so there are some instances whereby we we'll discover that uh, when we are working with the STLC function, which is the STL combined function, we we'll discover that we are writing more strings and it might get some kind of, uh, the, the whole process uh, might be complicated in that case. So in order for us to avoid that issue of rewriting so many strings uh, in the code, then in that case, we can use, uh, we can use function that is coming from this very, very, very good package that was uh, developed, uh, which is uh, the glue package. We, I've just posted the link in the chat. So we can use function that is coming from this glue package, uh, which is the STR glue function. So we have our DF mutates, then what are we mutating on? We want to create a new column called greetings. But in this case, we are, use, we are not using the STLC or STR uh, or the coalesce function. In this case, we are using STR glue. So what do we want to glue there? We have high, then we put it in coli, in coli brace. We put the name there in coli brace. So when we, we means that we want to glue this name alongside this, which is going to create a new column called greetings. So in the greetings column, we are going to have high Flora, high David, and high Terra. So this is another way of doing it. If you do not want to use 
uh, the STLC uh, function, but may I found this, uh, this is very, very, very useful. I prefer working this way uh, than the, the STLC function because this is intuitive. It's very easy uh, for me to read the code and really understand uh, what the code is doing. As we can see, the STR group recently convert missing values to the string NA, unfortunately making it inconsistent with STLC. So how do we overcome uh, this trick? So we can do it this way, DF, where we mutate greeting, STR glue, where we can, we can put this glue in two coli braces, where we have high, high name. So when we run, when we execute that, we can have flora, then we have our high flora, high David, and high Terra. So we over, we can overcome that process of string uh, inconsistency. We can resolve that by wrapping it in two uh, coli, two coli braces. But what about uh, instances where STLC and STR glue work well with mutate? But but there are some instances whereby we might this job of STRC combined and STR glue might not be very, very efficient for us in our use case. In that case, uh, they do recommend we use this new function, the STR flatten to flatten it up. So when we have STR flatten, so we create a vector and this vector has a string of X, Y, and Z. So in that case, if you say STR flatten, we create a vector of X, Y and Z. So we have X, Y, Z here. Yeah? Then we have STR flatten. We have X, we have Y, we have Z. So in that case, we can pass in as another optional argument for the separator. So we can say, let the separator be a comma. So in that case, we have X, comma, Y, and also what Z. But in some instances also, we can specify that STR flatten, we pass in our vector, the separator should be a comma, and the last, what you want to place at the last, we want to place and, we want to place and as the last, and before the last, the last item in that vector we are creating. So here we have X, Y, and Z. So we can now be now X, we are having X, Y, and Z. And it also works well when we have a data frame. So in this case, we are having a data frame, which is a triple, which is a row-wise uh, data frame. If you hear the word triple, you know that it is a row-wise uh, data frame. In that case, we are having name and fruits. These are all the fruits, okay? So in this triple, we have a DF. We are grouping by all the name that we can find from that triple. And then we are summarizing and what do we want to summarize? The new column we are trying to create is going to be fruit. Then we are using the STR flatten, that is to flatten it up. So STR flatten, so what do we want to flatten? We want to flatten the column. We are trying to, to flatten is the fruit. So what we, do we want to use? We, the separator, we want to use a comma. We want to use a comma uh, to separate them. So here is going to be, Carmen, banana, and apple. So what do we have here? We have Carmen, banana. So it's going to omit this and give us apple. So it's going to place that there. So the next is now Marvin and Nectarine. So what is the next? We have Marvin and Nectarine, which is there. So we now come down to the last. So the last we are now going to have Terence, Cantaloop, okay, we are going to have papaya and margarine. So that is how it's going to what, arrange them in that order. But in, the, in this case, we missed something in terms of the recycling of the vector because you can see the length, they are now going to be of different length. So but when we are in this chapter, this other section talk about uh, extracting data from strings, okay? And in order for us to do that, this we are going to use uh, this set of new functions that was just added. Uh, that is, is still these functions 
they are in the development version of tidy app. And in order for you to get access to this separate longer delay, separate longer position, separate wider delay, and separate wider position, that means you need to install the tidy app package that is directly from GitHub. It's not on in CRAN yet because they are still experimenting uh, on this function. So you need to install the development version uh, of the tidy R package because it was just as today as I was working on the notes. So I install all the, I, I switch from the stable version, which is the CRAN for, for the string R and tidy R and I switch back uh, to the development version of those two packages in order for me to work uh, with these notes in which uh, we are using for today's uh, discussion. So for the you two, you need to just pass in the column and the delimiter column and the width for the longer position. This we need to pass in the column, the delimiter and also the names because the names is going to be the names of the new column in which we are trying to create. Then this one will be the column and also the width, but we'll see this uh, in the next chapter, in the next part when we'll be experimenting on the function. So like uh, the separate uh, wider delim, I think let me post the link uh, in case you want to check uh, the documentation. So I think that is the reference manual for the function. So it's coming from that. So we are, here we are having a, a data frame, which is a table. We are C, we are having A, B, C, we have D, E, and also what F. So when we have our D, F, one, and then we are using the base pipe. We are using separate longer delim because separate longer delim is just similar uh, to the, our pivot longer function. If you are very used to the tidy hour, it's similar to the pivot uh, longer function. So in this case, we are passing in our column in which we want to separate into a longer. Uh, we want to separate it into a longer uh, column. So in that case, we pass in the column, which is the X and the delimiter. What the delimiter means like, what are the separator for those columns? So the, in this case, the delimiter is gonna be a comma. So in this case, if you look at, we have A comma B comma C comma, then we have in here D comma E, then we are having F. So it's going to split this into their own separate rows. So it's, a is going to be here, B is going to be next, C is going to be next, B is going to be next, E is going to be next, and F is going to be next. So if you are, if you are very much familiar uh, with the tidy out package, this is similar to separate underscore rows function. So at times you can use separate underscore row function, but in that case, uh, you, can, you can also do this similar task, but this is a new function that is still under experimentation. This is a new function that is still under experimentation. They are still working on it. They are still making so that to make it more efficient. So they are still developing on this. But in some other instance, we can choose to do it in this place. Uh, let me post this, the separate longer position, which is another function, post it to the charts. So if you want, it is, we can also use the separate uh, longer position. So in this case, we are having the, our data frame, which is DF2. It says separate uh, longer position. So in that case, in separate longer position, we, do, we are passing in our column in which we want to separate. So in the next, we need to just pass in only the width. So here, the width is gonna be one. So I'm so sorry, I did not print this because I was supposed to print it. This I'll work on the notes before pushing it back to GitHub in the actual code. So let me go back to the notes so that you can see what the actual code is supposed to look like in the separate longer delim. So that we can see what the actual code is supposed to do. Let's see how we are through with all this. Separate long, yeah, I think this is it. So we have our T table, which is this. So we have our DF1. We have a separate longer delim. I think I was working with separate longer position, sorry. Separate longer position. 
Yeah, I'm correct. Separate longer position. So in that case, we pass in the column and also the width, which is one. So when we pass in the width, there is one. So the year is going to be one, two, one, 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 three, one, two, one. So it's going to arrange everything in a longer format, which is very, very, very useful. We make, which makes it uh, very useful. I will update this before pushing uh, the notes uh, back to GitHub. So, but we can also separate it. We can also separate our 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 table into column. We can separate them into multiple columns. So, but in that case, we need to pass in the delimiter. Then we need to pass in the names of those actual columns. So here we are having a call, a data frame which is DF3. So here we have DF3, and then we use our separate wider delim. The separate wider delim. Then we have our X. We have our X, which is a column we want to separate. Then the delimiter is going to be what period we use period because if we have here we have A one zero point one point twenty twenty two we have B one zero point so the delimiter is a period. Okay. So now the names of those new column in which uh, we are trying to create the names is going to be code. It's going to be addition and also year. So the names is going to be code, edition, and year. That is what we are going to get there. So where is it? So it's going to be code, edition, and year. I think this is it. This is the output. So we are going to have names. We are going to have code, edition, and year. And these are the outputs in which we got. This is going to be the output. Like the code is going to be A10, B10, E15, which is what we have here, A10, B10, E15, which is gonna be in column one, which is for code. Then this is gonna be one, two, and one. This is going to be for the addition. Then this is gonna go in for the year, uh, for the year column. This is going to go in for the year column. So, but we also have, the separate wider position. So what is the separate wider position doing? Uh, the separate wider position. So in that case, uh, we have our DF, which is uh, DF4, which we have a column X, okay? So here we, call it, we are calling the DF4, and then we are using our function, which is separate wider uh, position. And in the separate wider position, we pass in our X column in which uh, we are trying uh, to work on. So then we specify the width. So for the width, we create a character vector. In that case, year is going to be four because if you look at year, we have 2022, which is four digits. 2021 is four, 2023 is four. Then the age is going to be two. Yeah, the age might be 21. Yeah, the age is 12. Yeah, the age is 25. And the state is going to be what, two? Yeah, it's Texas, Los Angeles. This might be cancer. So, so when we run that, we are going to have our new table. That is separate wider position. So that is separate wider position. And it's going to place uh, this in a table way. And we can use this for the uh, for our visualization. These are new set of functions in which uh, they are still uh, experimenting. They are still working on these functions. Uh, they are still under development because they have not pushed it yet. They have not submitted this uh, new function yet uh, to CRAN. It's still under development. In order for you to have access to it, you need to install uh, the de development version of Tidy Hall package from GitHub. So in this uh, part, uh, they do discuss how diagnosing a widening problem because there are some instances where we can have problem, we can run into problem uh, when we want to use the separate uh, wider delim function or the separate uh, wider uh, position function. So here they have a table, which is DF. Then they are using the separate wider delim function they are passing the column, they are passing the, the delimiter, which is uh, hyphen, then they're, they're passing the names, which is X, 
y z the names that is that is going to be the names of uh, the new column in in which they are trying to create in that case they run into error so in, in when you encounter such problem how are you going to what debug it how are you going to fix this issue we do the we do this we can resolve this by pass using these new tricks so where we are passing the names we can have these two few which is going to be debug we can pass in this new line which is too few when we have too few we can debug to see uh, where this function this problem lies then when we pass in debug to the filter not x underscore okay because x underscore okay x underscore pieces and x underscore reminder are the two new columns that was added uh, to this df those are the two new columns that we added because the x over underscore pieces tells us how many pieces we have found compared to the ex expected three then the x underscore remainder isn't useful when you when there are too few pieces but we will see it again shortly so how are we going to we can use this debug function we pipe it into a filter then we filter for x not x underscore okay okay so it's going to return all this to us so when we get that when we get that we can now see where uh where we are having the issue then we can now fix it with this two few align underscore start function so when we now pass it to align underscore start it's going to align them we can see this is okay this is okay this two is okay but this one is we have missing data this one we have two missing data then we can now filter out filter out those uh areas where we have uh those uh missing data to in our pipeline in that case uh, we, uh to make it more and more efficient so what about uh when we are working with uh letters uh when we are dealing with how do we deal with letters uh when we are working with the string out uh, package so in this case we can use uh the str str underscore length function and the str underscore length function i think i posted uh the documentation uh for the package in the chat so when we have str underscore length we have a vector this one we have in a this one we have in r for data science this one we have in na so here we can say that the first item the length is one this other one the length is what 18 while this other one we have in what na we have in na there in that case we have in na but we can also combine this str underscore length we can also combine this with the count uh, function uh, that is coming uh, from d plus so here we have baby names which is the baby names package uh, that we have installed earlier on in the at the beginning so when we call the baby names we are, we can pass count okay the new column we want to create is uh length which is equals to str underscore length of the name okay it's going to count uh, the length of every name then we are using the weight function the weight which is going to be equals to what n the weight everything by n so in this case we can see that uh for the name so we can see that for the names for this other one the, uh, we're having two this we're having three we're having four that is the length of the name this we are having five so in that order so in that order we can just check uh for uh, the names but we can also say filter str underscore length of name that is equals to what 15. so we are in this case we are filtering out for we are filtering out for all the names uh, that is equals to 15 then we can now use this count on the names then we are using the weight argument then sort equals true so when we put the sort equals to is going to arrange all the counts uh in 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 descending order so this one is the highest which is 123 118 118 108 52 45 28 
25, 22, and so forth. So I don't know at this point, are there questions before we proceed? Are there questions? Any burning questions uh, before we proceed? Hello? We are here. No question. Yes, I'll continue. Okay. Okay, subsetting, I think this is a very also a very useful function in which we can use in subs subsetting a specific uh, string. We can use in subsetting out items from a certain string. But in this case, for you we to be able to use uh, this function, we need to specify both the start and the end position uh, from that string. So in this case, we have a string. Yeah, we have in, we're creating a character vector this one we have in apple, this one we have in banana, this one we have in pear, and I'll sign it this to an object called X. So when I say str underscore sub, because I want to substitute for some specific uh, items from this string, then I pass in the string, then I specify the start position should be from position one, then the end position should be at position number three. So in that, that case, we are going to have apple, band and peer. I think it's a very useful function, but we can also do this starting our counting that is from the opposite side, that is from the, from the end. So in that case, we, we are not going to use a positive value. We are going to use negative minus three and also negative minus one. So it's gonna be in the reverse. It's going to start from behind. So, But there are some instances whereby the str sub might be too short. It will be just return a much as much as possible. So in this day, we have str sub. What are we subbing? We have in a start position is one, end position is five. So it's always going to return just a because we only have start position number one. We do not have end position at number five. So it's going to return just the first alphabet there, which is going to be a. And this also plays very well with the pipe. So we can pipe it into a mutate. Then we have first, which is str sub. What is the name? The start position is one, end position is one. Then the last, then str sub of the name, start position minus one and end position uh, minus one. If we do that, we are going to have first a data frame that is going to have both the first and also the, the last uh, position. So how do we did deal with uh, the long string, string that is very long? How do we deal with such a string uh, when, we are, uh, when we are working uh, with R? So in that case, we can use this function. They recommend the str trunk or the str wrap function. I am not too useful with the trunk, but I know I've used uh, the str wrap quite a lot when I'm working with text. If maybe I want to wrap text around a certain uh, visualization, I can just say XTR wrap. Then I just specify the width that I want to use for my wrapping. So it's going, just going to wrap the text. Very useful. Rather than me putting line breaks as a specific position in which I want to break that text, I can just use uh, the STR wrap. So in that case, we have in X, paste zero. This is a string in which we are creating, we are creating the string. So we can use str view to view it. str trunk x, the width is 30. So when we pass that, this is what we got. But when we use the str view, str wrap x, the width of the wrapping, we said we specify 30. So in that case, we are going to have this. So the first 30 will be placed in the first line. The next 30 will go to the second line. So in that case, the width of each line is going to be 30. So it's going to arrange all those texts in that order till we get to the last. So it's very useful. 
maybe in your in your in your visualization that you are creating maybe with ggplot2 so this function is very useful so but how they also explain how do we deal with non english text non english text uh how do we deal with uh, the non-English text? And there, there is a discussion. Uh, there were some discussion, some conversation around this, which is being posted in the chat. So we can have this function from base R chat to raw. Then we have this function, which is hardly. It can be chat to raw. You can just put, you can just put your name after calling the chat to raw. So it's going to give us this encoding screen. Encoding. So it's going to provide us with this raw encoding. So in this raw encoding, we know that 48 stands for letter H. So maybe we can use H48 stand for letter H. We know that 61 stand for letter A. We know that 64 stands for the encoding of D. 6C stands for L. 65 stands for E and 79 stand for Y. So it's very useful for us to know this encoding. But basically in our studio, the default encoding for our studio is UTF-8 is what we are using. But in some other regions of the world, they have other encoding scheme like ISCO iPhone 8859 iPhone 1. For Latin 2, we can have this other encoding. So different region of the world, uh, they have their different encoding scheme. And this encoding scheme, they behave differently uh, when we are working with data in R. Just take, for example, we have a raw text, which is X1, which we, we have here. If we want to read this text as read underscore CSV, we pass in the raw text, okay? But when we have X2, we have the raw text, we can also use the read underscore CSV and pass in that text. But in this case, we can now supply X1, which is what we pass in at both. We can now say locale is equals to locale. Then the encoding, we can change the encoding from UTF-8 to Latin-1. In this case, we can change the encoding to shift iPhone GIS. So, but we can also use this guess encoding function on X1 to guess which encoding in which they use in when they, when they were saving uh, this data set to know, to, to guess for the type of encoding, we can guess the encoding. Then in that case, uh, our studio uh, is going to supply, is going to supply uh, the encoding. Further explanation, I think about the encoding was uh, discussed uh, in this, uh, blog, uh, this blog post that I just uh, posted in the chat. I think uh, this is the link I just posted uh, the link in the charts. So what about the letter variation? So for the letter variation, we can have this other encoding scheme. So we can have STR view on you. So we can, STR view on you can just give us this. But we also look at STR length to check the length. It shows that this one is one and this one is what two because we have you forward iPhone and this other encoding scheme so it just show that uh we have we have uh two items in that encoding in that encoding uh scheme but this uh for local dependent function so for the local dependent function we can use str to upper which is going to convert everything to uppercase str to upper this this Locale, which is TR. So it's going to convert everything uh, to upper. The STR to upper function uh, is coming from the string out package, but we can also do our sorting within this STR underscore sort. We can use it in sorting this. This is going to be A, C, CH, H, and what Z. Within the STR sort, we can pass in the locale, which is CS. So if we do that, uh, we are going to get our, our outputs. So in order for me to wrap up, to wrap up this chapter, so this chapter mainly, we mainly learn 
about how to do uh, our data wrangling uh, process uh, using the string R uh, package. And we learned about the new functions uh, that are coming that is still under uh, rapid uh, development uh, that is still uh, on GitHub. The, the separate uh, wider delay, separate wider positions. Those are new functions uh, uh, that are very useful uh, in which we still need because we still need to practice. We still need to practice on how, to, because it's always believed that practice is what is going to make uh, perfection. We still need to lay our hand on this, have a mental model on how we can uh, use uh, these functions in which we have learned into our actual uh, data analysis uh, process. In that case, we are going to really learn a lot. We are going to really improve. And I also encourage you also practice, uh, you also take part in the Tidy Tuesday or any other uh, challenge that is going on on Twitter. Maybe in that case, you can also further learn by reading other more experienced people their code, learn how to read it uh, and also learn how to put it into actual practice. I think in that case, uh, you are going to really improve uh, on your data wrangling skill. I don't know if there are any questions uh, before